I, I'm nervous. I'm, thanks for asking. I'm fine. I'm, I'm, um, I'm excited, Chuck. This is, we made, I, I, I hit some shots last week after my lesson that I haven't been able to hit for years. And when I say that, I mean the, the, the trajectory and the, and the distance and the feel. It was, now I couldn't do it every time. It was more like, you know, 20%, maybe 25. But wow, when I did it, what a great feeling. Martin, that's the goal. The goal at first, when you're making a big invasive change, when you're rewiring your brain and having to do something so radically different, is one out of five. Okay. If you hit one out of five that were like, holy crap, that's different, sounds different, flies different, distance is different, you're, you're, you're ahead of the game. You're right on the money. That's exactly where I try to get everybody in that first week of, of making a change, doing the drills in front of the mirror, videoing yourself, and then hitting balls and even playing. One out of five is perfect. I, I have to tell you, it's amazing what people look for. And I, I remember back when I was – younger and coaching boys in baseball, I always felt like baseball coaches that didn't know a whole lot coached a whole lot of parts of the game that were unnecessary to coach, but it was the parts they could see. And, you know, like the stance and the grip and the, uh, these, but I guess my point is, is I never personally been paying attention how you picked up so quickly on the way I bend my right elbow. I mean, I bend my right elbow immediately. It might, my right elbow might as well be attached to my hip. And <laughs> um, where I picked that up, I don't know how long I've been doing it, probably a long, long time, but it's really hard for me to try to keep it straight. But yesterday watching the last round of the, the pros tournament, I noticed watching everybody when we had that behind view, you know, that back view or whatever you call it, man, every one of those guys do exactly what you were trying to instruct me to do. And I mean, they have to bend the elbow, but man, they keep it straight for a while and I'm working on it. Well, yeah. I mean, that's always been my point with rotary swing is that the fundamentals that I'm trying to teach you guys is, is the fundamentals of the pros. It's the fundamentals of the pros. All right. It's not the variables, you know, people get caught up on exactly what you just said what they can see on the outside, the periphery, where the arms are, what the pinky looks like at the top, club face angle, that stuff's important. But those aren't fundamentals, those are variables. Those are dependent on other things. And so what you saw is exactly what you're learning. You're learning how to move your body correctly. And really what, what you're starting to kind of get over the precipice of is understanding power. And that's at the end of the day, power and consistency is the name of the game, right? And we, you can't produce power and be consistent for a long term doing it the way that you were doing it, right? No, it's impossible. And so, right, and you experience that, right? Every now and then it's okay, but, but when you watch the pros, the reason that they're so consistent is the power source. And that's really the fundamental of rotary swing is how you use your legs, your core, and your trunk. And when you understand and you start putting the, the, uh, the priority in this part of your body, then you start seeing that it doesn't matter what your arms do relatively. You can swing like Jim Furyk. You can swing like Tiger Woods, Matthew Wolf, whatever. The way that the body moves and the sequence of it, the kinematic sequence is everything. And that's what I'm starting to get you to the point of now that you've got some semblance of an idea of where the arms are and how to turn and all of that. Now we start taking your arms and deprioritizing them. Not that they're not important, but we deprioritize them to get the body to be able to start to take over. So, Quick question. Something that happened to me on the range last week, outdoor range. I started warming up with a wedge and really working hard on trying to keep my right arm straight and get that shoulder, trying to take the clubs back with my shoulder, shoulder, the club back with my shoulders rather than with my arms and hands, like I was before you got me. I mean, I was just flat picking it up with my arms and swinging. You know what I was doing. At one point, I got this sensation and I wanted to ask you about it. I, I tried to take notes to talk to you about it. And I wanted to ask you about it, Chuck. The club felt heavy to me, and it never did before. Does that make yeah. any sense? It makes perfect sense. When you stop holding onto the club so tight and death gripping it, and stop trying to whip it around, and you start using your core to move the club, your hands start getting softer and softer because they can. And as your hands get softer, you start picking up speed, but it's effortless speed. And this is the, this is the whole mind trick with everything you're going to learn. What you're going to eventually realize, no matter how hard you fight it, 
is that when you do it right, it's going to feel like you did nothing at all. And the only way to do that, to have an effortless golf swing is stop putting effort into it. And as silly as that sounds, it is the truth, right? So that's when you start feeling like you're swinging a sledgehammer, but you're doing it with your big muscles. And so that club is very easy to swing. So yes, it'll start to feel kind of heavy. That's a great sensation. Yeah, and I couldn't keep it. I had it for about, oh, five, maybe even 10 swings almost in a row. And then I kind of lost it. But wow, it was so interesting. And I wanted to mention that to you because I knew that I, I had, I had, something clicked. I, I can't repeat it, but man, oh man, that was sweet when I did it. <laughs> you can't repeat it yet, but you have to understand what really happened, right? When, so you warmed up with a wedge. So you're, you're, you know, you're not trying to hit the ball hard. You're just exactly. trying to loosen up. That was up. exactly what was going on. I wasn't trying to hit it hard. But you're hitting it further probably or just as far as normal. Wait a minute. I had I, a wedge that I, it was a 60 that I, 60 degree wedge that I typically hit about 60 yards. Yeah. It was going 75 or 80. Exactly. It was, so, the, it was like this out-of-body experience, <laughs> and then it went away. But I, I sure liked it while I had it. Well, we're going to teach you how to do it with every club in the bag, even the driver. And, and the trick is just tension, and it's where that tension is. And with the 60-degree wedge, you started to get the feeling of deprioritizing your arms and not trying to pick the club up and not trying to be quick and starting to learn to try and sequence your swing instead of just trying to hit the ball with the club. And that's where you got that first little taste of what rotary swing is really all about. Now, yeah. as we keep working on that and we keep helping you, we, we, your arms were the priority. Your arms were the power source before, right? And we're slowly getting that out, right? We're working that out. It's only been one lesson, right? But, but now what we're gonna start to do is now that we, we can't just take a power source out. You can't take somebody who just swings like this and then tell them, okay, just don't swing your arms and then expect them to hit the ball anywhere. It doesn't work, right? We have to get your legs working. And once your legs work, then, that, then every club in the bag starts feeling like that 60 degree wedge. And that's the goal. That's where we're gonna get you. So I've had, I've had two knee, sur I've had three knee surgeries, not replacements, just arthroscopic surgeries and two on my left. And so I wanted to ask a quick question. It feels yeah. better. It's more comfortable for me on my left knee if I, if I take my left foot, instead of being perpendicular to the line of flight, I toe my left toe towards the target line a little bit. Not a lot, maybe 30 degrees, 25, 30. Is yeah. that, you're going to be okay with that? Because that Perfectly feels way, fine. way more comfortable. Perfectly fine. Absolutely. First of all, pain is number one, right? If yeah, we have pain, we're going to do whatever we, we can make all kinds of compensations to work around a pain or an injury, right? So that's yeah. not a problem, but that's pretty, that's pretty normal. I flare, as I've gotten older and I've, I'm 44 now and I've lost mobility in my left hip just, you know, I've probably made, I don't know, a million golf swings in my lifetime. Right. Maybe so I just keep, it's a lot of wear and tear. Right. So I flare my foot out a little bit more and the older I get, I'm going to probably flare it out a little bit more and it just makes it easier and takes less stress off my hip. It really doesn't matter. It feels easier. I just wanted to, I, I just like to double check some of these feelings with you to make, cause I don't want to, I don't want to get better at being bad again. You know, I want to <laughs> right. Make improvements. right. <laughs> nope. You're totally fine there. Uh, any other questions before we get rocking and rolling? Well, um, you know, I, I feel like I know when I flip mostly because of the feel and the ball flight. Um, but I think sometimes if I can just get to where maybe my hands aren't 10 inches in front of the ball on a straight line with the club backwards, but maybe even to the point where instead of, um, you know, instead of, instead of this, maybe just neutral at contact, that would be, would, wouldn't that be a pretty good improvement? Yeah, it's a piece of cake. Flipping okay. is always caused by the same stuff. 99% of the time, it's right hand push, okay? So, so what we have to do is, again, right hand right now, when you're a right hand pusher, right side pusher, that's a power source, right? So if I just said, take that out, you wouldn't know how to hit the ball anywhere. You would lose a sensation of power. So what we have to do, again, it goes back to just the fundamentals, right? As your legs start working more, as you start using the ground, your feet, your, your hamstrings, your butt for power, your lat in the left side specifically, then all of a sudden this right side can tone down. So we have to go through it in those pieces 
so that we start getting your, your legs to pull the arms down, to get that initial drop so that the arms are chilled out. And once that happens, then the left, left hand is just guiding the club into impact and the right hand can feel like it's doing absolutely nothing. And that's how you get rid of the flip. And once you get that feeling of your hips pulling everything more back down into impact, the flip goes away instantly. You can't flip. Uh, it's so hard for most people to flip with their left hand. You can if you push against the shaft with your thumb, right? But if you take your thumb off because it's behind the shaft and you only have these three fingers on the club, now we've taken out the, you know, your thumb and forefinger are really strong. And it, once we take those out and you shift and post, your wrist naturally bows. I don't, I'm not trying to bow my wrist. It's just the fact that my hips are pulling everything down and posting up. And what I'm really trying to do, what I'm trying to work you towards is understanding where you really get that speed. You know, you've heard me talk about how the wrists are providing the speed and all that stuff in the swing. And that's obviously true. But what you really want to do to get rid of the flip and understand how you truly take that big quantum leap to effortless power is understanding how the left hand pulls on the butt of the club. And what I mean by that, it's not pulling it down, right? That's just going to steepen the angle. What I mean by that is through the hitting area, most people and what you're doing think that the way that they get the club to the ball is either to push with the right wrist, that's the flip, push with the right shoulder, or use their left wrist somehow. That's not as common, but it happens, right? But all of those things are trying to release the wrist angle. That's not how you release the wrist. The way that you release the wrist is with your legs. And so you've seen that video, you hit the ball with your legs. But what does that really mean? What I mean is that as I'm posting up on this left leg, what is happening to my hip? Well, it's going up about four inches. That's a lot. That's going to move my shoulder up going to move everything up. And what I'm doing is taking the handle and as I'm pulling my leg up, look what happens to my hand. What, what direction is my hand going? Up. It's going up, right? What's that going to do to the club? Right. It goes down and it goes down fast and it's no effort, but that's uh, truly Chuck, I, hitting the ball with your legs. I, since, you know, listening to you and watching some of your videos, there's a, there's a young guy, early thirties at our club, Great young man. I really love him. He's just a nice, nice young man. That's not the story. He's 5'7", five, 5'8", five, and he's 135 pounds soaking wet. If he had clothes on soaking wet, he would be 137 and a half. Right. But when he – his downswing starts with really getting down on his left foot. You know, I'm really – I mean, you yeah. can really see he gets down. I mean, it looks like four inches. Yeah, exactly. And he consistently drives the ball 275 to 290 consistently. And he's, he, he's, he's, he's tiny. I mean, he hits the ball as far as some huge guys. It's all mechanics. You can't replace the muscle mass that you get out of your legs by using that left leg to drive it into the ground. And when I say drive it into the ground, we're talking about force that you're literally creating, pushing into the ground. Your goal when you're understanding vertical ground force, pushing this foot into the ground, is to imagine that you're doubling your weight, right? So I weigh 170 pounds. And so my goal, and I'm gonna start doing some, I ordered some pressure plates again. I used to use force plates and pressure plates all the time and stopped using them. But now I've, I've ordered some new ones. And I'm gonna start doing some videos showing this, that at impact, the force that I create from my left leg is double my body weight. It's like 350 pounds. Wow. So I would put 350 pounds on your hand if you were under, if your hand was under my foot. And what that's doing is as I drive up, that allows me to pull the handle up. Not that I'm trying to physically pull it up with my arms or shoulders. That's it has silly. to go up. I'm pulling it up with my legs. I'm forcing it up. And then my hand just happens to be attached. And because it's getting moved by my leg, that forces the club down. But there's zero effort in this. I'm not using my hands other than holding onto the club and then that pulls the club up. But you have to get your legs engaged immediately off the ball for you to start to be able to do this. Is that impact bag you have, is that a drill you would, I should do? I bought one of those things. Yeah, for sure. I mean, impact bags are great for getting the feeling and stopping and seeing what's actually happening in impact. You know, if I look like this and my left hand is the only thing on the club, well, I know that my wrist is way too tight, way overactive. I'm pushing with my thumb my forearms tight. When I do it right, 
my hand is soft, I can pretty much let go of the club. But my leg did a lot of work, a lot of work, right? So I'm doubling that force of my body weight is what I'm trying to do. Okay. So yes, using an impact bag for stuff like that, do it without your right hand because you need to get used to not overusing it right now and starting to really overemphasize using your legs. That was one of my questions for you today. I'm so right hand dominant. Yeah. And um, I know that's, that's, uh, that's bad. So I just, I, I'll do the drill with my left hand only. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's get your legs working. Let me, let me see what's going on. Let's video it real quick. And then I want to give you, you some drills. Face to on first or? Yeah, face on's perfect. Perfect. That's all I need. We don't even need down the line. Well, actually, go ahead and do one down the line real quick. I'll, I'll just walk you through it. Can you turn down the line, Martin? Should I do one more of these? No? Uh, no, that's good. I got that. Just turn down the line for me. If you just make a pro – oh, you can move the camera if you want. Either one. Oh, I could have turned, I guess. I. Uh... Yeah. No, that's fine. That works. Am I in okay? No. Uh, that's good enough because I really just want to see your legs anyway. Okay. That was Perfect. Good. I think. That's all I needed. All right. Let's look at face on first. All right. So what I want you to start paying attention to <clears throat> in your backswing is what your lower body starts to feel like. Okay. And I'm going to walk you through all this stuff, but I want you immediately. The first thing that you feel is a big increase in pressure on your right foot. As soon as the club starts moving, even before the club starts moving, you're going to feel that you're shifting to the right, pushing that right foot into the ground, because by the time you're right here, by the time, Oh, Move this a little further. By the time your left arm in the backswing is right about there, parallel to the ground or so, I want you to feel that the mass, the, the vast majority of your pressure and your weight to the right shift is done. And you're okay. now getting ready to go back to the left. Okay. That's how soon this needs to happen. All right. and so if you look at your swing, watch your right hip. See how your right knee keeps rotating out sliding out, weak, rolling to the outside. Even your right shoe starts yes. to roll to the outside, right? Yes. So now your hips are late, right? You're, you, should all, you should have already been shifting back to the left. But because you didn't get pressure shifted to the right soon enough, we're going to be late. And so when we're late, those arms are super eager to help speed everything up. Gotcha. So they fire on the way down. So now when your left arm is parallel to the ground, Another good way of thinking about this is that maximum pressure you're going to have on your left side has already been achieved by the gotcha. time the left arm's parallel, right? Gotcha. So you, you can't do that unless you shift early. So that's how you get the legs to start to lead. And right now, they're just kind of following along. And so that's why you don't, you know, you kind of have a soft left knee. Let me show you there. So your left knee here never really posts up. Right there, it should already be straight or gotcha. very, very close to straight, Okay. Right? Instead, you're, you're still pushing off the right side a little bit, and the left side isn't doing its job. And I'm not, I'm not far enough left either, am I? You're close, but had you straightened your left hip, you would have been, left knee, you would have been fine. Okay. So I'm gonna walk you through this whole sequence. Let's take a quick look at the down the line view. That was a better swing, by the way, I think. It, might, it felt better. Well, the camera doesn't lie, so we will see. I hear you. <laughs> okay, so our goal, as soon as that club's going back, that left knee is going forward toward the left toe. We're getting weight over there to the right. So you shifted pretty well here. You started to go with the legs. That was better. That's a pretty nice squat move there. You're getting there. Well, that one actually felt better. I could kind of feel it better, but I didn't, I didn't post up strong enough, did I? Bingo. So you did a great job starting to rotate your hips, right? Your hips are already back to square at, at the perfect time. And you can see your legs are loaded up, right? They're not straightened up. You've got some force to be able to create there. What you're missing is that left side. Gotcha. Right? The, the left side 
isn't creating enough braking force. And that's why it looks soft right there and the right knee kind of buckles. So let me show you. It is soft. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But that was a more balanced swing because I can see my left, my weight is more on my left heel area than on my toe, which I happens to me a whole lot. Right, right. So let's talk real quick about what you need to do with this left side. I'm not gonna get into the, all the details because the lower body stuff is looking pretty good. We need to be earlier going back, right? So right. immediately off the ball, you're thinking, all right, I'm loading up into this puppy, okay? Got it. Got it. That's first thing. Now the, the important one for you, this is gonna be easy for you. The important one for you is because you make this beautiful initial rotation there and you have this nice squat look to you coming down, you've got legs loaded for force. What's missing is that you're not getting the deceleration phase. You've got acceleration, your hips begin to turn, and the reason your left knee looks soft is because you're still turning through the hitting area instead of decelerating and slamming on the brakes. I want your hips to stop turning. Gotcha. You can't keep pushing off the right, they'll just keep turning, and that just kind of drags the club through and leads you to start to flip because and, the club's coming in late. That's another reason why I hit fat, I'm guessing. Yeah, you're, you're, you're turning, but then you're not, you've got to shift laterally and you've got to post up. You've got to raise your pelvis back up. So the whole point to all this stuff is what you need to focus on is just the deceleration phase of the hips. You're, you're doing a wonderful job turning. You've got great acceleration in your lower body. All that stuff looks awesome. What I want you to start to concentrate on is now that you're, once you're 50, 50, you know, hips back to square, your whole job is slamming on the brakes and pushing that left hip up and back. That's it. So you're not gonna keep turning. You're gonna turn to here and you're done turning. Now you're just gonna post up. And the post up move still rotates the hip, but it's not you trying to turn your hips by driving. That's why you kind of get this soft look. Yeah. It's the slamming on the brakes. Okay. Make sense? Yes, it does. So all I want you to do is just go down, halfway down, stop just like you were in your perfect, nice little squat to square move. And once you're there, stop. And then I'm going to walk you through posting this puppy up to get that deceleration. Chuck, with a club or without a club? Let's do it without first. Okay. Do I just put my hands here? Yep, perfect. Okay. So immediately off the ball, load. Ah, don't move your head. You moved your head off the ball. Just focus on turning your hips for right now. That's going to be the main concentration. Good, there you go. Now shift back to the left, get back to your squat to square. Okay, now straight, nah, don't turn your shoulders. The only thing that's moving right now is that left leg. Feel your left glute, there you go, better. You don't feel that in your golf swing. No, not at all. Exactly, that's the deceleration phase that's missing. There you go. My hips keep turning though, it seems like. They're going to, but okay. they're getting turned in a very different way than what you're used to. All right, let me show you that real quick. You got better and better with it as you went through. I gotta so get we're... the timing of when to, to, to put on the brakes, I guess, is what you call it. Well, you, what I was just showing you is that once you get back to squat to square, that's where the initial hip rotation is, okay? From, from that point on, you're it's done, right. and you're trying to slam on the brakes right then. Okay. So let me go to the end. Right, it's right there, and it's straight up. Yeah, exactly. So let's look at these last couple. So first, so your head's moving around a little bit. We'll fix that. There we go. See how the left leg looks like a big old oak tree now. It's slammed on the brakes. It's rock solid. But my hip's, now, still, my, but my hips still cleared. That's cool. Oh yeah, of course. They're turned. That left hip posting up is pushing your butt, left butt cheek back, which is turning your hips for you. But it's a very different type of rotation than what you were doing before, which totally. was just kind of like the slow drag the club through. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, totally different. So this is where you get force, like real actual force from the ground. And you can see now you're starting to learn how to even jump off of it a little bit. This looks awesome, really, really good. So now, just to, so you, you mentioned the timing of it. And just to be clear, 
the way that the whole golf swing works in terms of phases of acceleration, right, is that your hips initially rotate, but then they begin to decelerate very quickly. And if you look at this on a graph, they accelerate for a very, very short period of time, a hundredth of a second in the downswing, okay? Because the whole downswing is only taking a quarter of a second. So they're here, that, can, that rotation phase is pretty much done. By the time you're here, closed, 45 degrees closed or so to square, you're no longer trying to turn your hips. That rotation is done, okay? Everything else is gonna start to, like your rib cage is catching up, your arms are catching up and so on. But as far as your hips are done, instead of continuing to do this and turn all the way through, which is what you were doing, you think you're done. Once you're back to square, no more. The only way that your hips are gonna keep turning is then once you're here, is now it's, we're shifting all of this force going rotationally into vertical movement. And that's why you saw your, the guy at your club who looks like he gets really short, Oh, and then he gets, and then he gets really powerful, right? It, it's incredible. It's, I mean, he's picture perfect for what, for your technique. And, and, and I, and I get, again, he's, he's 135 pounds. It's amazing. <laughs> well, good. You're going to be able to kick his butt here soon. So, <laughs> so we just need that initial rotation and then the rotation phase is done. And that rotation is happening while you're making that lateral move. So there's three forces in the downswing with your hips. You move laterally, right? Mm -hmm. You got to move all the way back to neutral. It's a long way. You got to move rotationally and you have to move vertically. That initial phase is rotation and lateral. But what you're doing, you're not moving up and down during that initial phase. You're going down. Why would you go down? To load these muscles, to you load your left butt cheek. Then you take all of that load that you've just created and you convert it from rotation and lateral to solely vertical, but the hip still gets turned because the hip is pushing back out of the way. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So that's I how I want you to execute think. it, but I, but I understand what you're telling me. So that's how I want you to start to practice. That's how you'll get the timing of it, right? So when I was talking about earlier, when I said, okay, by the time your left arm is here in the backswing, we've, we've maxed pressure on the right. We're already starting to think about going this way, right? Yes. If we don't go, we're going to be late. So now I'm already starting to fall back into that left side. I'm squatting down. I'm loading that left leg and my hips are beginning to turn while moving lateral. Now when my left arm's here, all I'm doing, driving up and pulling with my left arm against the butt of the club. And that's what causes the club head to go down. Make sense? It makes Again, I don't know that I can do it, but it makes absolute, <laughs> positive, perfect sense. You will be able to do it. I already saw you do it. So now what I want you to practice is do some drills on your own when you're just without your arms. Just really start to focus on your legs. Okay. Once you start to feel that you've tapped into this virtually unlimited power source, which is your lower body in the ground, you'll start to find that keeping your right arm is straight is a lot easier because you're not trying to load it up anymore. It doesn't make any, it won't make any sense to you because you're not doing anything with it, right? Yep. So you're gonna start loading up your legs, then take the club left arm only in your impact bag and start getting used to watching the club snap with just your left hand only. And then you'll find, well, gosh, the softer I keep my left wrist, the faster the club goes. And then that will start to make sense to you. And then you'll add the right arm back in there and you'll be like, heck, I don't even really need this thing. It's just there to help stabilize stuff. It is helping transfer energy, but you're going to feel like you're not very active with it. Gotcha. So that's how you're going to practice for this next week. Get your hips working. You're going to go crazy with your legs. We're going to be really aggressive with this at first. And then you'll start to f tone it down a little bit. But for a little bit, just have some fun with it because this is fun stuff to start to really feel how you can use your legs for power. Mm -hmm. And then start to just make sure you've got the timing and the sequence of it down. Sounds Any perfect. questions? Um, I, I will, I'm going to have questions as I start practicing. <laughs> sure. But right this second, I, I, I really think I understand what you're trying to tell me to do. So to map out my, my homework this week, I'm going to do, do a lot of these drills, and I'm going to also use the impact bag left hand only. Yep. Yep, and you can use, you add your right arm back in there, but the goal with the right arm is just to feel like you don't need it there. Once you got that, and you feel like your legs are doing so much more work, you'll be ready. You'll, you'll feel like, okay, this right arm, I can leave it on there, but I just don't need it. 
Gotcha. Okay. All righty, sir. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, I'm excited. I, 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 I hope I can get another bump in. This is, this is, it feels strange. It's, as you know, it's, it's different. So oh, yeah. I'm not, I'm going to have to really work on this and then, you know, hopefully, you know, week 10 days, two weeks, whatever, I will set up another, another lesson. I hope I can show you some improvement. All right, Martin. Sounds good, buddy. Hey, thank you. You have bet. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Have a great All week. Right. Bye. You too.